Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Michael Abraham Sprod, and I teach post Second Temple Jewish history, medieval Jewish history, and modern Jewish history, including the Holocaust and Israel studies, in the Department of Hebrew, Biblical, and Jewish Studies at the University of Sydney. Today, I wanted to talk briefly about Jews and the medieval world. Very often, when we study or even think about uh, Jewish history, we tend to focus very, very heavily on the early period and not surprisingly on the modern without actually considering what occurs in the, in the medieval period, but also its legacy. And of course, most people know of such events as the Crusades and also the, uh, the, uh, the symbiosis that occurred under Islam in Spain. But beyond that, uh, we tend not to focus too heavily. And what I want to briefly talk about are a few of notions that will expand on why this period is pivotal to understanding modern Jewish history. Of course, we know the Jews had lived in Europe since Roman times uh, and under uh, Christianity, they were persecuted, but still flourished in what we would call Ashkenaz, which was the Holy Roman Empire, largely uh, Germany, France, and Western and Central Europe today. They also flourished in Sepharad or Spain or the Iberian Peninsula, which was under Islam. And they fared much better, chiefly because unlike Ashkenaz, they were not regarded as theological enemies. And with this, they still experienced some discrimination as they did uh, in the Islamic world. Uh, but it did permit them to integrate into non-Jewish society. Also in the Islamic world, and by that I'm talking about the Mediterranean Rim and into what we would call the Middle East, Jews also participate in society and establish their own academies and fare much better than those their, their, their brethren living under Christianity uh, in Ashkenaz. What does this mean for us when we think about these three civilizations, or even if we divide it up into the categories of Jews living under Christianity and Jews living under Islam? Those under Christianity experienced widespread persecution, but surprisingly, or perhaps not surprisingly, they flourished intellectually and Jewishly. So we have a rich canon that comes out of this. And so when we think of such, uh, such individuals as Rashi and Nachmanides uh, and that period, we see the legacy of that learning. When we talk about Sepharad and the wider Middle East, we, we witness a legacy in two spheres, very importantly. The religious sphere, and we can think of the likes of Luzato and also uh, Maimonides, but we also witness the same in the secular sphere. And this, in, by this most amazingly, was one of the first times that Jews actually partook in non-Jewish secular culture and still remained true to their mission as being Torah observant Jews. Now, this civilization flourishes. Uh, so does the civilization in Ashkenaz. In Ashkenaz, it ends, of course, with numerous expulsions long after the Crusades, and Jews finally are pushed out and move out. In Sepharad, it occurs, of course, with the expulsion of the Jews in 1492, uh, and. Uh, uh, and then in 1497 with the forced conversions in Portugal. The question is, where do these Jews go and what happens? Well, the Jews in Ashkenaz are actually moving eastward. They've been invited by the Commonwealth of, of Poland and Lithuania to settle in those lands. And so we see a, an eastward shift. Not all Jews move. So the, the legacy and the scholarship that remains in Ashkenaz is there. But the majority of it shifts eastward, and it founds what we know today as this rich uh, legacy of Eastern European Jewry. The Jews that had been in the Iberian Peninsula moved largely into other Muslim lands, most notably about the, around the Mediterranean Rim, and enrich such places as southern Italy, what we know as Turkey, uh, and the, of course the Holy Land. For our purposes, and certainly for an understanding of the continuance of Jewish scholarship, both civilizations lead to foundations of other communities uh, and also the enrichment of other communities. So today, when we actually think about the legacy of Ashkenaz, 
We see it very, very strongly in the Eastern European Jewish communities, which largely were based on the models of Western Europe. And so too with the legacy of Sepharad and the Mid and Middle Eastern communities where you have this enrichment and this scholarship that came from those civilizations. And so whilst the communities physically are removed uh, or, or decimated, the legacy and the scholarship lived on. And then not surprisingly, as so often happens in Jewish history, there is a return. And so once circumstances changes, we actually see the Jews who are in Eastern Europe move back after first, further catastrophes, particularly in 1648, after the Khmelnytsky massacres in the Ukraine. And so this transference occurs once again. We see the same happening also under Islam. And what we see is this marvelous and enriching cycle of Jewish scholarship moving from place to place, space to space, and enriching communities. So when we think of a birth and even an end and a renewal, what we see uh, quite amazingly is this constant rebirth of scholarship in the Jewish sphere. And this, most importantly, is the legacy of this very, very important period. Thank you.